My name is Dave Scanlon. I'm the captain here of the Air Operations Section. Today we're going over a helispot drill. We're going to talk about basic helicopter safety. We're going to talk about interfacing with the Air Ops crew. And then at the end, I'm going to reach out to all you battalions and we're going to do some hands-on training. Working around an operating helicopter, we also use the term circle of safety. For the purposes of simplicity, we're just going to call that within 50 feet of the helicopter. Anytime you come within 50 feet of an operating helicopter, you should consider that a danger zone. There's really only two times you should be inside that circle of safety. The first would be, as a passenger, being escorted to and from the aircraft by a qualified crew member. The second time would be an appropriately trained person working with a qualified crew member during helispot operations. And remember, anytime you approach an operating aircraft within that circle of safety, remember to have the appropriate PPE, ensuring that you have proper protection for your eyes and your ears. I'd like to make one specific safety point when working within the circle of safety, whether the aircraft is operating or not. At no time will any persons other than the pilot or the qualified crew member move aft of this position on the cargo door towards the tail rotor. This is an area that is strictly off limits to all personnel except for those qualified crew members working with the aircraft. During helispot ground fill operations, due to the helicopter ambient noise, most all of our communication is done through hand and eye signals. For ground fill tank fill operations, the pilot normally signals the amount of water that he wants on board the helicopter uploaded. Half tank, three quarter tank, full tank. General hand signals with the helicopter are fairly simple. The three main ones that you want to be concerned with are this signal which indicates hold or stop in place. This one would be to move forward or in the direction, meaning towards me. And the third one would be this, which means make eye contact with and or pointing to an individual. In some instances, it might be this, contact with a pilot. And the pilot might be the final person indicating it's safe for you to approach the helicopter. Prior to the helicopter arriving, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and have all your hose lines in place. And you're gonna to wanna to have them charged. If you don't, it'll become very self-evident as to what can happen. They're all going to fly away. Also, if you're not on asphalt, concrete, or grass, you want to make sure and do a wet down. You want to wet down especially the approach area where you think the helicopter will be coming in, and also the departure area as well as the uh, actual spot where it's going to set down. This too will become very self-evident as we come in and start throwing up rocks and dirt. When the helicopter first arrives, you want to stay away from it until you're, until you're motioned in by the crews. The two crew members are going to exit the helicopter and we're going to call you in and we'll probably handle the first two couple of water loads on our own. And then we're going to start incorporating uh, ground crews to help us fill. These are the things you're going to need to do a hose lay to a Firehawk S-70 aircraft. You can use either two and a half inch hose or four inch hose for this hose lay. If you know you're going to be setting up for a Firehawk, use your four inch hose. You're going to need adequate four inch hose to get to the three way gated Y. There are going to be two legs of this hose lay. The first leg of the hose lay is 100 feet of two and a half inch hose that is going to come in front of the aircraft to a D handle. Your two and a half inch D handle shutoff valve. The second leg of this hose lay is going to be 50 feet of 2.5 inch hose to a D-handle shutoff, a 2.5 inch D-handle shutoff valve, 200 feet of inch and three quarter protector line. Stage your dry chemical extinguisher next to the gated Y. The arriving helicopter will bring a 15 foot section of 2.5 inch hose with a special cam lock coupling that will attach to the aircraft. These are the things you're going to need for a helispot hose lay to a single pad for a 412 aircraft. You're going to need adequate 2.5 inch hose to the gated Y. A 2.5 inch gated Y with an inch and a half reducer. 50 foot section of 2.5 inch hose to a D handle. A 2.5 inch D handle shutoff valve. 200 feet of inch and three quarter protector line. Stage your dry chemical extinguisher next to the gated Y. The arriving helicopter will bring a 15 foot section of 2.5 inch hose with a special cam lock coupling that will attach to the aircraft. 
In the event of needing two or more pads on a single helispot, you'll need a combination of the previously discussed hose lays. There will be an Air Operations Helispot Manager on scene that will help you work through all the variables and set up a safe and efficient helispot. One of the jobs that you're going to be called to do during a helispot operation is to actually make the connection to the helicopter. As we come up to the helicopter after it's finally set in, you want to put your foot right on the skid. The reason for this is twofold. For one, as we're filling the helicopter, these skids can spread and catch your foot if your foot was right next to it. The other reason that we put our foot here is so that we know what the helicopter is doing at all times. If it starts to move, we don't actually need to see it. We're going to feel it in our foot. We're going to come in and make the connection and throw one ear. It's only necessary to, to close one of these. And you want to give your D-handle operator the thumbs up to go ahead and start the water flowing. Once the aircraft has received the appropriate water, we'll go ahead and disconnect the cam lock. Open both ears, pull the cam lock away from the aircraft, hold it up so both the pilot and the air operations crew member can see it. Then they can signal for the aircraft to depart. Be sure and brace for the rotor wash of the departing aircraft. This isn't a difficult task, but it has to be done right every time. It's very unforgiving if something should go wrong. For instance, a hose line still attached to a departing helicopter will be catastrophic. Mm-hmm.